Hey there, everybody. It's been a while. Um, we've missed you. I've missed you. I've been having a little bit of uh, an anxiety flare up recently. Um, nothing you guys did. Don't worry. You're cool. But a lot of what's been going on is um, feeling kind of like paddling to stay in place. Um, I mean, I don't really think that's the case, but that's the way it feels, so um, it hasn't felt pressing to make more videos, um, so I apologize for that. I should be more regular, but it can be hard sometimes, and I hope you understand. Anyway, we're going to get started talking about how we are approaching um, the sequestration of more carbon in the soils and the cycle and processing that it goes through once it's been made um, and how we're using it going forward and some of our thoughts on this. So I hope that sounds interesting and I hope you'll stick around. So one of the wrinkles in being a space that receives wood chips regularly is that at times the grinders that they use, um, the commercial chippers um, still need maintenance, the teeth need to be sharpened, otherwise you're going to end up with uh, full sections of branch or um, partway chewed things. You can notice the, um, the pattern on this is something that went through a chipper. We can see that it, it took some beating, but largely remained whole. Um, it's possible that that was done with uh, one of the edgers or trimmers um, or a chainsaw, but it seems really unlikely that that wouldn't have just been thrown in to the, uh, the intake to be dealt with uh, as part of a larger branch. So as that maintenance goes on throughout the week or in between whatever their spacing for maintenance is, we start getting larger and larger collections of this type of stick, which plays into um, our approach with larger sticks and some of the old logs or deadfall or dried things that fall out of the trees during windstorms. And we have our modest, if I call it nothing else, modest um, burn drum. Now, um, I'm not sure which video, but I've probably talked about how a few years ago I pulled this washing machine drum out of the woods on the edge of our property. Um, and so in a, in a bit of cleaning, we washed it and we have started burning in it. I mean, really, we've been burning in it ever since. One of the things I like is that this lip uh, that used to be the housing for the lid and the, uh, the outer casing for the drum where it would intersect with the casing and uh, the outer interface of the washing machine. It's, it's got this really pronounced lip right there. And that has an added benefit of pushing any smoke once this gets going um, and pushing it back down towards the center where it is pulled in through the body of the fire where this base is and as that comes up, um, you'll actually see it tumbling in and it creates this really neat effect where um, the center is actually pulling everything down and sending fire out to the edges, which just increases this circular pattern, which keeps a lot of the particulate that would otherwise be burnt off and sent into the atmosphere uh, contained or recirculated through this. Um, I know for a fact that this is not the most efficiency that I could house in it, but in a fit of cleaning the woods of other people's trash, I found what feels like gold. And this is a vessel that creates enough for me to fill our wheelbarrow with. Um, and that is to me, doing this generally by myself, that is a workable amount, and so I feel like I could go bigger, um, but that would require even more of a time and energy expenditure, and if I'm doing this by myself, um, 
you know, time can be of the essence. So it really feels imperative to keep it manageable and keep the time frames that we're doing a burn to a short period so that there is availability in my time bandwidth and my mental bandwidth to approach other projects and keep everything else in motion as well. So this is what is left of the five gallon bucket that we use for um, managing the ducklings in their space uh, as they grow out to field readiness and life in the big show. Um, at the moment, it's only taking uh, a little bit at a time, but I'm finding that they enjoy nibbling at it. Perhaps uh, they find some benefit in eating the char. I know that there are other animals that do so, but it's not something that I've ever seen any of our adults doing, so I'm curious to know uh, what it is they're perceiving as valuable in it. But we get this really nice texture here. And forgive me as I bend over, but this all comes out very nice. And it starts out very fine, and we can get plenty of very, very small crystalline bits of biochar to spread very finely that the ducklings like and that are easier to spread evenly over the spaces where we are incorporating them if they are not going through the duckling pen first. You can see here an instance of where we've been spot treating with the duckling bedding and biochar uh, around some lemon balm. We have some more around this good King Henry. Uh, and we've been doing more. You can clearly see the bits that we're spreading into the mix uh, pre-late season mowing patterns so that this will have plenty of um, availability when the rains come and when we have more green nitrogenous grasses to throw down as an additional layer before the fall wood chips start rolling in and the leaf bags start rolling in. It's under hazelnuts and under the patch of the Jerusalem artichokes which are doing great this year. I'm very happy to see them doing so. Uh, we'll definitely be trying to offer some of these to folks. Um, if we have a, a large tuber haul, last year we had some very end of growing season damage here. Uh, so that's something we're keeping an eye on. But you can see down here um, a more recent application of the duckling bedding with the biochar incorporated in. Uh, it's very, very fine, and they have stamped out a lot of it. We do leave a considerable amount of water in them. Um, they do get pre-soaked before going to the ducklings because they do um, matter to us. So we're, we're sure to keep it from being too dusty when it's incorporated into their bedding, uh, just for a respiratory health management standpoint. But it melds very well. We have a lot of available nutrient uh, that some of these flies are taking advantage of, but there are predatory wasps and predatory insects abounding, and we have them all over the place. So I'm not too concerned. This will all get covered as well as the season progresses, and it should provide for additional water holding capacity in our sandy soil, which you can see is senescing during this dry season. The pattern of rain falling on our property, or rather the pattern of a lack of rain falling on our property is continuing, but high hopes abound. I've been spot incorporating some of the biochar that I'm creating um, as not quite a mulch cover. It's more um, just pressing in the, the carbon where I can, uh, finding opportunities to step on it and drive it a little bit at a time into the soil 
and make it available for the communities that can make use of that carbon and the nutrient that it contains. Um, we're using our compost tea uh, in a 50 gallon drum to do our fracturing. Uh, so we have uh, a few five gallon buckets that get used for dowsing and fracturing and then a portion of it after a soak in one of the wheelbarrows gets brought out here or incorporated into these areas and the spaces where you see the plant growth doing well in here are the spaces that um, I've noticed had the highest initial concentrations of the biochar applied. Some of this we are pleased about. For instance, the linderas coming back. Our New Jersey tea, a uh, second Nanking cherry that popped up from the seeding last season, um, as well as things that are persnickety additions that we weren't intending, like this thing thistles. Tough stuff, but it holds a lot of uh, trace minerals and some great elements, so it is welcome to continue doing its work, and I come through and harvest uh, a set of basil leaves every so often to uh, incorporate into the weed tea ferment thing that we are doing. So um, that is how we are dowsing and fracturing it and some of the ways that we are incorporating it. I'll likely shoot some b-roll later. It's still a little too warm. I'm getting continuous messages that my device is overheating, but it's still a little too warm for me to want to tend a fire at this moment. So, yeah. And to show you folks, that last really big rain we got gave us this. Last night, that was, that was our big, that was our big rain. Such bounty. Anyway, that's it for me for right now. It is hot. And in case you folks haven't noticed, I am um, sensitive to the amount of UV that is getting put out. So I hope you're all well. I hope you're all thriving like this pumpkin here. And until next time, thanks for watching. Happy planting.